Good morning and welcome to our service of worship and prayer and hearing God's word together. We missed you last week. It's okay. <laughs> we missed you last week. Uh, we are so grateful to know that our uh, music director, Liz, who was feeling unwell, is now getting better. We welcome you to this service and encourage you to find the order of service online. You'll find it at ascensionportperry.com if you'd like to follow along and say the prayers with us, especially if you would like to sing the hymns as you listen to the music. Our service today begins with our opening hymn, hymn number 384 in common praise, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. I want to begin today's service with a word of gratitude to all the people that help this service to happen, along with our music director, Liz, who plays the fantastic music that we get to hear. We have Ben helping us with live stream, and today we have our reader, Jim Blight, uh, offering the readings for us, and uh, Kathy Sweet prepared the prayers of the people this week. So a thank you to each of them. Let us begin with the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray together as well the collect prayer appointed for this day. Compassionate God, you gather the whole universe into your radiant presence and continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring wholeness to all that is broken and speak truth to us in our confusion, that all creation will see and know your Son, 
Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now we will have the readings. A reading from Deuteronomy, chapter 18. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, I hear the voice of the Lord my God anymore. And ever again see this great fire, I will die. When the Lord replied to me, they are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among your own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet who will speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that that prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods and whom presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of honor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have good understanding. His praises endure forever. A reading from Mark, chapter 1. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there were in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsing him and crying with a loud voice came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, what is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord, we ask that you would open your word to us. Make it alive within us, within our hearts and our minds, within our spirits and our actions, that we may show and share your love with this world. Amen. Now, each Wednesday uh, so far in this new year, 
we've been gathering on Zoom for Bible study here at Church of the Ascension, and we've had a few people join us each week. And we are using right now the readings for the following Sunday. Uh, so the Bible study is way ahead of the game when it comes to the homily on Sundays. And this week, given the reading you just heard from the Gospel of Mark, we had a very lively conversation about demons. Nothing like the strange and somewhat unexplainable mysteries of the spiritual life to get us wondering, curious, with lots of questions, what is really going on? Now Mark, in this gospel, uses the term unclean spirit more often than any other author of the New Testament. We only hear that term unclean spirit once in the Hebrew scriptures and about 24 times in the Christian scriptures. There is no getting around it. It is a significant part of Jesus' ministry, and this was, of course, casting out unclean spirits, or to put it even in more religious terms, exorcism. Now these encounters, though otherworldly to most of us today, they still have much to teach us. For let us not be naive. Our world is full of unclean spirits. Now, when Jesus commands the unclean spirit to be quiet, it's because he does not want the unclean spirit to name him in front of others. In that time and that culture, the one who named another was the one who had authority. And the unclean spirit does not have authority over Jesus. And this is a significant moment and it signifies to the reader or the listener that God has won, so to speak, through Jesus and the power or authority that he has, God has won over the evil forces that may have been perceived as the ones who had power. Jesus is the one now claiming that authority and ushering in the kingdom of God, and Mark gets right to it in the first chapter of his gospel. Twice the word for authority is used in this passage in relation to Jesus. People are astounded at his teaching. He speaks with authority, and then when he commands the unclean spirit, who listens to him and obeys him, they are again impressed by his authority. His actions give credence to the authority with which he speaks. Now, we don't tend to run around finding and naming demons in our midst, but like I said, our world is full of unclean spirits. And I would suggest that when we fail to name them, and with the authority of Jesus bid them to be silent, we actually allow them power over us, power in this world, power that is not theirs to have. I quote a biblical scholar, Osvaldo Vina. He writes, unless we name the demons, they will name us. They will control us and destroy us, but it takes courage to do so, for it will make us unpopular. Some will consider us apostates, negating the faith. I'm not sure that we are willing to pay the price as Jesus did. What is an unclean spirit then, if we are to name them? I would suggest anything and everything that pulls us away from the truth, the light, the love and the life of God. The lies that speak to us from the inside, telling us we're not good enough or not lovable. The lies that speak to us from the outside, telling us we're not of the right social group or educational level. Nadia Boltz Weber, a Lutheran pastor, writes about her depression and naming it. And let me give you a little bit of a heads up. Nadia is not your typical pastor and has a rather irreverent sense of humor. Preaching about another passage from the Gospel of Mark that refers to unclean spirit, spirits, Nadia said, this week as I was feeling squirmy about people who talk of evil spirits and demons, 
like they are beings in and of themselves. I remembered that at one point it felt so much like my depression was a character in my life, that it actually felt really good just to go ahead and give her a name. I called her Frances. Frances first stopped by in my teens and early 20s, which was easily written off by my family as me being moody. But later, when I seemed increasingly, when it seemed, why well, I seemed to increasingly like the same things that Francis liked, booze, emotionally unstable boyfriends, and self-destruction, she finally just moved in. She was a terrible roommate. She kept the place filthy and always told me really devastating things about myself. For some reason, when she lived with me, I was no longer able to do simple things, like shop for groceries. I'd stand far too long looking at the selection of yogurt. She distracted me so much I would forget to eat. My mother suggested I go talk to a nice lady about evicting her. She's a bit of a dope fiend, fiend Francis, but it ends up there is one drug she doesn't like. It's called Welbutrin. Two weeks after I started taking it, she was gone but not for good. Now, 20 years later, it still seems like she knows how to find me. And sometimes she'll show up unannounced and stay a couple of days, even though I am now into so many things that she hates. Sobriety, exercise, community, eating well, and of course, Jesus. What are the unclean spirits in your life? that seem to have a voice that just won't go away, a presence that seems to persist, nagging at you? Is it the anxiety that tells you how unsafe you are and keeps you hidden? Is it the whisper that you are not smart enough, you don't know enough, that keeps you quiet? Is it the hopelessness that there is nothing more to life than long, quiet days alone that keeps you from looking out the window, looking towards the light? Is it the spirit of entitlement that tells you and me and everyone in this culture and time that you deserve more and better, every convenience and opportunity, often at the cost of others? Is it the addiction that pulls you away from life momentarily satisfying your despair, convincing you there is nothing better, nothing truly life-giving. Now let me say here, as someone who is very familiar with mental illness, unclean spirits do not equal mental illness. However, mental illness can be one of the ways in which unclean spirits manifest themselves in our lives. Anyone who has had to deal with depression or anxiety or bipolar disorder or any other mental illness will know that by naming it, you are taking a very important first step. But it's really, really hard for us to admit that we're suffering. We still very much live in a culture where a broken leg is far more acceptable than a broken spirit. But in this time of pandemic, mental health experts are telling us that we are in a time of crisis. We need to name the mental health struggles that we are having. Otherwise, we allow them to name us and to have power in our lives. So start by naming the unclean spirits in your life. And I know it's tempting actually to start with naming the unclean spirit in other people's lives, but let us start with our own lives. And then turn towards the authority that is God, made known to us in Jesus. Again, to quote Osvaldo Vina, he says, praying is not a pious resignation to God's will or an exercise that puts our minds at ease, but rather, using Ched Meyer's words, 
Praying is that intensely personal struggle within each disciple and among us collectively to resist the despair and the distractions that cause us to practice unbelief, to abandon or avoid the way of Jesus. In other words, it is the struggle to believe that change can really happen. A better world is possible. And so I believe that we are invited to start with prayer. We turn our hearts and our spirits towards God. And as Osvaldo says, this is not a pious resignation to God's will. This is actually a subversive act, one that undermines the power of evil in our world. Prayer also activates and motivates God's people. It's often in those quiet moments of prayer that we are most open to God's spirit, leading and guiding us. And it's often as simple as an idea popping into our mind or the thought of a person we could call and speak with, an action perhaps to take. And we walk with courage and with faith onto the pathway that Christ has laid before us. For some, that will mean a visit to the doctor and possibly medication. We understand, unlike those at the time of Jesus, that underlying much of our anxiety and depression is the physiology of our brains, which can be helped by medication. For others, the naming of the unclean spirit will require a good friend or a therapist or even a priest, someone who can listen and help us sort out which power is really directing our lives. And for all of us, it will mean giving more room and credence to the voice of Jesus through scripture, worship, and prayer, however we access it. And so let us be brave and name the unclean spirits in our midst. And then let us walk more fully into the light, the life and the love of God, which is our true path. Amen. Having shared with you this particular homily, I am aware that there are people who are in crisis at this time with different things that they are struggling with, which we may call mental health issues. And if that is the case, I really encourage you to seek help. There are a lot of crisis lines that you can access by going online and simply typing in mental health crisis. And in Durham, I wanna give you a number in case you feel you need to call someone right away. In Durham region, you can call 1-800-742-1890.
Let us continue our time together by offering our prayers to God for the church, for the world, for our community, and for ourselves. Let us pray. Let us join in prayer to our God of hope. Following each prayer, I will say, Lord God, the source of our hope, and your response will be, hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray for Mother Earth as she suffers from the wounds of climate change. Help us to not be lazy or disregard the care she needs. Lord God, the source of our hope, hear our prayer. Prince of Peace, in this world of chaos, disease, uprising, protests, and violence, we pray for peace. We pray for peace between nations, for peace inside fractured countries, for peace between races and peoples, for peace within families. We pray for peace inside our troubled souls. Lord God, the source of our hope, hear our prayer. God, our leader, during this uncertain time, we pray for Justin Trudeau and all the leaders of countries throughout the world. Grant them wisdom that they may make the hard decisions in difficult situations. Grant them patience and courage and strength Surround them with love, that they may in turn treat others with love and respect. Lord God, the source of our hope, hear our prayer. Jesus, our great physician, we pray for all those who are suffering from COVID-19, for those at home, those in long-term care, those in ICU and on respirators. We pray for their families, O oh Lord, please grant their caregivers strength and endurance, energy and hope. We pray for those who are seriously ill with conditions other than COVID, remembering especially those whose surgeries are being delayed. We pray also today for those in our own community who are on our hearts and minds. We pray for John and Lorraine, for Wayne, for Carrie and Linda, for Amelia and Carrie, and any others you wish to name at this time. Spread your healing light over all those who suffer. Lord God, the source of our hope, hear our prayer. Ever-present God, we people of the world are so tired of being in lockdown. Help us to remember that you, O oh Lord, are always present with us and that we are truly never alone. Help us to reach out to you, Lord, through meditation and prayer and within scripture. Shine your holy light into the darkness of loneliness that the world may be warmed and encouraged by your holy present presence with each one of us. Lord God, the source of our hope, hear our prayer. Look with pity, O Heavenly Father, upon this COVID-19 filled world, as we live with injustice and fear, disease and death as our constant companions, as the unclean spirits. Have mercy upon us and help us to eliminate COVID wherever it may be found. Strengthen us and encourage all who seek fairness in worldwide vaccine distribution. Fill us with hope for a time when the world will once again be healthy and peace-filled and strong. You are the one true source of our hope. Amen. And we continue our prayers by offering our confession to God. Confident in the promises of God's forgiveness and love for us, we confess the ways in which we have failed to follow the pathways of God's love. And we say together, Almighty God, long-suffering and of great goodness, we confess to you, we confess with our whole heart, our neglect and forgetfulness of your commandments, our wrongdoing, thinking and speaking, the hurts we have done to others, and the good we have left undone. O oh God, forgive us, for we have sinned against you, 
and raise us to newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive our sins, and ensure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now we bring all our prayers together into the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. And so let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. And as we bring our service to conclusion this week, let us say together the doxology. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And may you know the blessing of God, the one who calls us into light and life, the one who has authority over the lies that are spoken to us. May you know the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and may this blessing be upon you this day and always. Amen. We conclude our service today by singing together the hymn found in Common Praise number 500, Sister, Let Me Be Your Servant. Let us go from this time together to love and serve the Lord wherever we are called. Thanks be to God. <laughs>